Now we're on a test drive in this Chevrolet S10 4.3 liter engine. We can look at the fuel trims right now and we see the fuel trims are taking away 7% at idle. Now remember the customer had complained of a low power problem on this vehicle. So let's go over to the sharpshooter and let's start a fuel trim chart long plus short which is total trim and let's see where we're at. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to drive the vehicle now and put it under a load. Now we're going to pull over and we're going to look at the data that we've gathered from the fuel trim table under load. As we can see, the chart is red except for the bottom. So what I have is I have the bottom much better than at the top. As I put this vehicle under more load, more fuel is required to keep the engine running. As you can see, we're at over 50% add between long and short term. This is a severe problem. So let's see if this is air related or fuel delivery related. To do that, we're going to shut this test off and we're going to go to the VE test. We're going to start the VE test and we're going to run this. Now that I have the VE test running, we can see that it idle both the traces, the red trace theoretical and the yellow trace is actual error are running very close. Although it idle, that isn't important. This test is, doesn't become accurate until I'm above 50% throttle. So we're going to start to go down the road and first gear, we're going to open it all the way up and we're going to start to plot it. We've pulled first gear, so we're going to pull back over again, and we're going to look at the data. We'll stop the test from running, and we can see that the theoretical and the actual are right on top of each other, and that the chart is all green. This is an indication that the air side of the system is good. Now when I say air side, what does that mean? That means the cams are in time, the exhaust isn't restricted, the induction system has no restrictions. Everything that allows the air in and out of this engine and the measuring device, which is the MAF sensor, are reading correctly. When we go back and we look at the fuel trim chart, we can see that it went from okay to very bad. The more load, the worse the problem is having to overcome. This is a delivery problem. We have something wrong with the injectors or the fuel pressure. So what we're going to need to do now is we need to check the fuel pump, the pressure that's made, and see if the pressure's right. And if the pressure's right, then we need to move into the injectors. The next test is a fuel pressure test. Now that we're back at the shop, we're going to check the fuel pressure on this S10. We're going to do that with a fuel pressure transducer. This is a 0 to 300 pound transducer, so we're going to put it onto the fuel rail and we're going to get a reading on the scope. Okay, what we'll do now is we're going to open up the eScope Pro. We're going to do a dual scope so we can see the trace once we start it to check the fuel pressure. We're going to check channel one, and we're going to go to 300 pounds. Now that set the pressure transducer, now one pound is equal to one volt on the scope. But we need to zero the offset from these sensors, so now we're going to hit a zero on. Now when we start this vehicle and let it run, we can check the fuel pressure and snap it to see if we have a fuel pressure problem or not. So let's start the car up. Now that the engine has been started, we can check the pressure. The pressure is running about 48 to 50 pounds. I've got quite a bit of ripples. This system should be running about 60 pounds on this car, so this fuel pressure is low. Now one other thing, when you zero these pressure transducers, you cannot have them connected to the rail prior to zeroing them. You'll hold pressure on them. So you need to zero it without it being connected to the rail. 
that will allow it to be a true zero point. In this case, we did zero this correctly. This is low pressure. I'm low by 10 pounds. Since this is a pressure problem, now I'm going to need to check the power and ground at the fuel pump. And we'll also want to look at the fuel pump with a current clamp to see how fast the pump is in rotation. We're going to hook up the amp clamp. To do that, we're going to put the amp clamp into the center mode, which is 1 millivolt equals 10 milliamps. Once you've got it switched in, push the blue button to zero it. This will go on to the gray wire. We're going to hook up the channel 2 wire to the power wire, which is the gray wire. We're going to hook up the green to the black wire, and there's two black wires, so this is the black wire that's larger. Now we're connected, let's go check the waveforms on the scope. Now that we've got the current clamp connected to the back with the voltage connections into the power and ground of the pump, what we need to do is set the scope up where we can acquire the data correctly. Channel 1 is set on negative, positive 20 volts. I want to open the range scale up, and now I want to go and pick the scaling, which is 1 millivolt equals 10 milliamps. That's what we set the amp clamp to. Now 1 volt equals 1 amp. That makes it real easy to use. We're going to start the deep record reading. We're going to hit the key on so we can close the relay. Now let's take a look at what happened here. We're going to come over and select zoom window, bring it in, and we're going to go and we're going to look at this very first rush-in current. The rush-in current occurs because the pump has not turned yet. Now rush-in current on most pumps, depending on the way they're wound and the wire size, should be about 12 to 15 amps. In this case, I only have 6 amps of rush-in current this is indication that I have some kind of restriction in my circuit, a resistance on the power or ground. The green is my ground, and I'm under two tenths of a volt, which is good. Look at the red, which is my power at the feed of the pump. That's the gray wire that we got in back by the pump. We're only supplying five volts. Also notice that with that voltage, it is fluctuating with the current as I'm coming on and off the commutator bars it pulls more and less current, making more of a drop or less of a drop. Notice that it mimics the amp clamp. What the problem is here is I've got a resistance somewhere on the power side. So let's go up to the relay and check the relay. The way we're going to check this relay is using kluge wire. Kluge wire is used to build circuits on circuit boards. So what this is, is it's very, very thin wire almost the size of maybe dental floss, but it's a wire. Now, you can buy this at Radio Shack or any type of electronic store. What this is really good for is checking the relay. If I take the fuel pump relay out and I strip each end, now we're going to put this down into the power and the power supply, and it's so thin that when I put the relay back in, it doesn't affect it. Now I actively can get my probes on each end and I can check the voltage going into the relay and coming out of the relay without disassembly of the box. As you can see, this is a very quick method of checking the relay contacts. Now that we've connected the wires under the relay, let's cycle the key and see what happens. Let's stop this data and take a closer look at it. We can see that the 12 volts going in is fine, but the voltage out, let's turn off the amp clamp, the voltage out is very low. So if we look at this, we can see that the voltage has a 6 volt drop across the relay. If we turn the pump on, the pump current this is the rush-in current right here. This is normally 12 to 17 amps for, the, for a rush-in. The reason this rushes in 
is because the pump is not turning. So any current problems will be seen in the rush in. As you can see, we only have seven to eight amps of rush in. Normally, this rush in is going to be 12 to 17 amps, depending on the construction of the motor. The next thing we can look at is how fast the motor is turning. So we want to come over here and we want to look at these. So we want to find a signature hump, and we can see that we have two high humps right here. So we're going to pick this one, and we're going to pick this one. Now, these two humps should be nine commutators apart. This is an eight commutator pump. So I go nine to get back where I started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is one complete revolution. If we look down here, we have 21 hertz. So if we take 21 and we multiply that by 60 seconds, we can have the RPM. So the RPM of this of this system is very, very low. What we should be having is an RPM somewhere of about 5,000 RPM. That's pretty normal on most of these pumps, somewhere right around 5,000. So what we've got is 1,200 RPM. It shows that the pump isn't turning fast enough in order to produce pressure. What we have here is a six volt drop across the relay contacts. What we need is a new relay in this vehicle. Now that we've replaced the relay, let's cycle the key and see what the new relay will do. Let's stop that data and take a look at it. We're going to take the zoom window and we want to look at the rush in voltage now that we have the new relay in here. As we can see, the rush in is pulling almost 17 amps. This is much better. We can see that we have 12 volts going in, and we still have a little drop across that relay of about a half a volt. We're going to look at down here by the amp clamp. We want to magnify this, and we want to check how fast this pump is in rotation. So what we want to do is to look for the signature hump. Right here, I've got one that's low, and I've got one that's low right here, in between. So I've got a high, low, low, and then a V. Do you see how this is the same point? So if I get my cursors and I mark this, so we're gonna mark this point to this point, and we should have eight commutator bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You go one more to nine so you can get back to the same point you started at. Now, is what I'm going to have is 79 hertz. So I'm going to take 79 times 60, and that's going to be about 4,800 RPM. What we're looking for on these pumps is for them to be turning somewhere around 5,000 RPM, 5,500 RPM is pretty common on most, on most of these fuel pumps. In this case, this shows that the pump now is making the right current and the right pressure. This vehicle is fixed with a relay.